Hi everyone, thank you for coming tonight. Um, great pleasure to be able to play the film in the check in 99. It was, it was, we had such fun shooting some of the movie here, so, um, and he was about to sing some karaoke for you. Um, I'm Tom Waller, I'm the producer and director of the film, and of course, this is Pitya Prince around. Bravo. Thank you so much. So I think what we'll do is we'll just maybe say a few words about how we came to make the film. I, I actually worked with uh, Vitya, whose nickname is Pooh, and he and I had worked on a Hollywood film, and he was actually playing a king. And uh, he played the king of a fictitious country which didn't, doesn't exist called, what's the name of the country? Sangu. Sangu, which is a little bit like Rangoon meets sort of India, Thailand, Malaysia. Yeah, I dress up like an African king. Yeah, he looked like an African king, sort of tribe leader. Anyway, so I, I had this um, script for a, a film called Mindfulness and Murder. It was a, a murder detective story based on the novel by Nick Wilkes. And it was a basically a, an ex-cop who becomes a Buddhist monk and he investigates the crime in a monastery. Are you thought, trying to promote our next Yeah, like that's screening. really our next screening, yeah. So, and the, the idea was that I needed to find an actor who would play that role and Vijaya was perfect, the kind of right age, um, and I thought he would be great for this Buddhist monk. So I said, okay, how do you feel like shaving your head and doing a film where you play an ex cop? I think every movie that I, I do with you, I have to shave my head, right? Yeah, this is also. And we had such fun on that, and I thought, well, when I came to this, this film, I wanted to do something with him again, and the role of, the, of Chevrolet came up and, and he was perfect for the role and I said, okay, at least uh, you get to, you know, you can play a character over 20, 30 years and that was the tough thing was to try and for, for you to really kind of, you know, you had to lose a lot of weight at the end of the film to look like, you know, you'd be ill. So, um, yeah, so that meant uh, at the beginning shooting all the scenes with your belly out and then all the scenes with your belly in at the end. So, and you had to go on a big crash diet. I, I remember when, I think the first film we did together, which is the, the monk, I always call it monk movie. Uh, Tom said to me, you know who, if we get the first festival, you will go to the fe that festival with me. So I was so looking forward to go to a film festival for the first time. And I remember that Tom called me one morning and said, hey, you know what? We can into a film festival. This is in March. And I said, where are we going? He said, we are going to Siberia. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just that, you know, he was thinking Canada, Berlin, Sundance, maybe Toronto. I said, what, Syria? I don't want to go to Syria. No, 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 Siberia. So I Google, okay, the weather, mine is 26. <laughs> All right, well, you know, we went, but I remember on that on the plane, you were reading The Last Execution, and he was kind of like, yeah, you, you'll be this guy next time. That was the, you know, I think the first time I heard about yeah, this we, project. We talked about wh whether we, we try and get the film into a warmer film festival. We ended up in Shanghai, actually, which is where the film premiered, and he won the Best Actor Award at Shanghai. So, which is a it's actually always said it's me and Kun Chao you want So maybe, um, would anyone like to ask a question? I, I know it's always tricky, the first question is always difficult. But there we go. Hi. Hang on. I'll, I'll just pass you the microphone. Uh, Tom, it's uh, really excellent and people, it's really impressive. Uh, Acting. Um, actually, Tom, I mean, the movies show that you um, you have really deep understanding of um, of Thai spiritual um, culture, and I just wonder if you, as a Barang, um, uh, you know, had to stay in Thailand for a while, or how did you get the sort of a subtlety of, of this? Well, well, I'm actually Lukru, so I, I, my mother is. So I, I, um, I suppose the whole thing about believing in spirits 
Uh, this was something that even you know I got from my mother because she would she would almost believe that spirits were in the same room as if the, they were furniture. So I kind of felt that um, this film to show the outward manifestation of spirits as a person, as a character. This was really for me the interesting thing to have uh, David Asabanon who plays the spirit character. He's a kind of chameleon. He, he's, he's also the Grim Reaper. You know, he's like. Uh, the Yoma Yoma Ban. He's the guy who's going to either drag him to hell or take him to heaven. heaven. He's like a judge as well. So he's also his conscience. I, I like this character because it meant that it gave the the whole spirits, which are usually in someone's head, uh, kind of a kind of visual. Um, the visual language for us was the Yoma Ban and his two sidekicks, who are the Yoma Tu, who are like Tweedledum, Tweedledee characters that you see through the film. And so this is this is for me something which isn't in any. There's no novel about his life which has any of that in it. We, this is something that Don Linda, the writer, and I kind of made up. But I think it really shows that he was facing inner demons all the time, and he carried out his duties with with one always having one thought on his karma. And so that's what the film is really about. It's about good and bad karma and how. You have to deal with that with a job like being executioner. Maybe you want to add. Well, um, many of you who might not know really much about the Thai mythology, my question you know, I'll ask about who is these three guys walking around the whole movie? But if you know a bit of, you would find out tonight that in Thai mythology, we have very similar to, you know, like Mr. Death. You know, so David. He's actually played a part of Mr. Dead. And in Thai mythology, we have Yung Matun, and then we have Su Wan and Su Wan, which is his right hand man and the left hand man. They are the, the soul, they, they deliver the soul. So they're the one who, when he accepts the job, he starts to see all these people in his life. And uh, I think also Don Linda did a good job researching and understanding the, the Thai culture and the beliefs. And then we put together, and I, you know, he's American as well. Don Linder is a, a writer from New York, and he he really came onto the project with a lot of, uh, I suppose, an open mind about how to how to write this film. But he also immersed himself in the mythology and immersed himself in the details of Chabret's life, which he got from Chabret's widow and his family. So they were very helpful in giving him giving us all the information we needed to make the film. I think the first time Don met Mr. Chowlet was at FCCT. And he was fascinated with Chowlet's rock life, so he arranged to have a meeting with Mr. Chowlet. And I remember that Don said that the first day or first time that we went to visit Chowlet at Wang Kwang Jail, it took one hour, one hour before the interview, that he can start it with because Charlotte was doing an air guitar for one hour before Don can start it with me. We, we never met him by the way, so it was, uh, we entirely based the making of the film and the performing of the character on what was written and basically on the script. We followed the script and that's kind of, when you make a film you always try to have a, a document which is going to be as much as possible what the film will turn out like. But of course it changed a lot in the making of the film because we couldn't get this location or that location or we couldn't, we didn't have money for this scene or that scene. So there were a lot of changes during filming, including like where can we film this scene? And, and then one day we're like, well, where can we shoot this scene where he has to sing some karaoke? And I suddenly thought, hey, check in 99 would be a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that morning, uh, it was almost two years ago, we were sitting up there, it was like six in the morning? Yeah, it was pretty and, early. I, and six. It, yeah, and the scene was that I'm eating this pig knuckle, very cold pig knuckle, and a very warm signal beer. We tried to make it like, you know, very festive evening. Yeah. At six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. How did you get to the hey. Authorities. Is that the real jail? But, but yeah, how did you get their permission? 
Yeah, we, we managed to shoot inside Banquan Prison for only for a, a short time. So a lot of the scene, a lot of the film is shot outside the prison. But uh, just to give you a little tricks of the trade, we actually shot in the car park of the temple, which is next to the prison. So the wall that you see is actually the outside wall. And actually, we're, so we're not inside at all, but we're outside with like a hundred extras. And so it looks like you're inside the prison because you have the towers in the background. But those are the towers on the inside of Banquan. So we're able to get away with a lot with that kind of parking lot of the temple. But we also had a letter from the corrections department saying we were allowed to go into the uh, to the to the prison to shoot uh, some of the film for like a couple of days. And so we all do, we prepared the whole team outside the prison gates. We were ready to go in with our cameras, our axes, all in uniform. Everyone was ready to go in and do these key scenes we needed. And of course, the prison commander said, "Your letter says you can go into the prison, but it doesn't say anything about bringing actors in." So we were like, well, how are we supposed to make a film about one of your prison guards if we can't bring the actor playing the prison guard into the prison? And we, we're not allowed to show any faces when we go inside. They, they said you can shoot, but you can't show any faces, no uh, prison guards or, or prisoners. So all the scenes where, all the shots where you see like ankle chains and feet and, and people walking in chains and, and kind of like the, the sort of, um, the shot at the end of the film where you see the real prison room. That's all shot without, with obviously without actors. So we were able to go in with a camera and we had about maybe an hour in there, 45 minutes to an hour to shoot. And they, allowed, they allowed you to shoot actually inside the building where the executions took place? Well, that was a set. So we actually managed to, we recreated that um, actually in my grandmother's garden. So that was actually a, built in the garage. Is it still there? Yeah, it's still there actually. I think you saw about five movies already, right? Yeah, I, I do all my movies in my grandmother's garden. So. <laughs> but it was quite eerie because we actually had, you know, there was real guns shooting real ammunition. I mean, there, there were blank rounds, but it was kind of, Every time that we did those scenes, it felt like going into an oven because you have the lights of the filming and and, you, and even in the film, I kind of the way it's graded, it sort of has that kind of oven-like kind of color scene to it because it really does feel when you go in there with the lights, uh, you know, and, and someone is being sent to his death. Basically, it kind of it, sometimes it, it was kind of pretty eerie working in the in our execution room because it was so realistic. Very intense. The art department does such a great job. I mean, even the blood splash on the wall, which we found in the real execution room, we kind of, you know, we have that in the in this set and it was just and the sand on the floor which they used to mop up the blood. I mean everything was very we try to make it as real as possible and uh, it's it's actually that's exactly how it looks like in the real room. Oh, oh, I was yeah. going to ask a question. Hang on. Uh, why was this? Oh, sorry. Okay. Why was this film banned? We're told that you did one showing, and then the film was banned. Couldn't show it in theater. Oh, you want to answer that? You don't have to. You don't want to. Well, actually, the film was passed with uh, with no cuts, but um, the. At the time the film came out, uh, the military government had just come into power, and it was it was kind of like, you know, we, in fact there was a curfew only like two weeks before, so we were worried that we wouldn't even be able to show the oh, film. Like it was, that's how it got so it was because it was released in July of 2014. Oh. But you know, we lasted about a week in the cinema, and I think, you know, to be honest, a film like this is kind of considered art house in Thailand, so there's not a lot of people. Who usually go and see comedies and horror films who want to go and see a film about an executioner. But having said that, you know, we were we were well received at Shanghai Film Festival, we had good reviews. We were up against some Leviathan competition. We had um, the posters for the movies in the cinema in the lobby were a dinosaur right sorry, it was a dinosaur robot or a monkey riding a horse. So it was like Planet of the Apes or Transformers 4. And I'm in the middle. And then it was like Boo is a little cardboard cut out of him. And so we were like 
And we were always the poster that was like next to the toilet, or the, the, yeah. it was like around the corner, and the light wasn't turned on. It was in the toilet. It was in the toilet. Yeah. The, so our, po our posters sure. weren't in the lobby; they were like in the toilet. And then actually, our post poster happened to win the best poster of the year. Yeah, we won best poster of the year. Yeah, best poster of the year. So I just think if you don't have a lot of money to market a film, you don't last long at the box office. And you know they do. They they're more interested in selling popcorn, and, and I guess our film wasn't a big popcorn seller. So. <laughs> it was a beautiful film. Well, I, actually, um, there, there's copies on available in the stores for on DVD with, without subtitles, and we're about to release uh, some limited edition DVDs on our Facebook site. So if you go and like the last execution, then you'll, you'll be able to know about getting copies because. Uh, you know, we, we also we recorded a, a director's commentary, so we've done a limited edition of probably be only a 500 release, and they're going to be DVDs that have English subtitles on them. So uh, it's just facebookcom slash the last executioner. And you, if you like us on that, you'll, you'll know about when the DVD comes out. But yeah, distribution is very tough. I mean, films don't just automatically get seen. When you make a movie, you've got to spend a lot of money to get it out there, and a film like this which was kind of made for kind of quite a low budget. We didn't have a lot of money to, to promote the film, so uh, we've just been touring it around film festivals, trying to generate exposure, and, and we went to some warmer places than Siberia this time. We did some good festivals, but you know we didn't get into like the Cannes Film Festival or Sundance. We, Shanghai was our first opening film festival, so it was kind of from there on. We've been touring for about 18 months. So we travel. We will be in Lumpur Bar next month, Lumpur yes. Film Festival and Human Rights Film Festival in, in Barcelona next week as well. So we're still showing the film around the world. Hi, uh, my name is Chris Coles. I was in the film business for 25 years. It's a great film. It's one of the better films I've seen in the last few years. And uh, I hope you get distribution in the U.S. HBO, Netflix, you know, kind of that mini series format now could pay your budget 20 times over, I'm sure. Can you talk a little bit about what the distribution success or unsuccess or barriers have been overseas? Because the film is not only a great film, it really conveys a huge amount about Thai culture, which is quite unusual in the Thai film. I mean, really, I've been around Thailand for years and had a sort of father-in-law who was a police officer in Thailand for some years. So I knew Thai police kind of from a different angle. And this movie really conveys a huge amount of information about Thailand. Yeah, the thing about distribution is, you know, with big movies, they have what we, you know, they have kind of vertical integration. So when a, when a studio makes a movie, they can get it out in the cinemas because they own the cinemas. Uh, but basically, the distribution is all, it's all set up because they're kind of pre-sold. Our film was kind of made as an independent film without any studio. We, we, we had a struggle even to get it out in Thailand, you know, would you believe they wouldn't even want, they didn't want to show it in the cinemas. They were like, you know, we can't even show this in cinemas, there's not going to be enough audience. So we had to go to Shanghai, win some awards before we were even kind of able to book the cinema. And then they were like, okay, yeah, we'll give you a week or two weeks. And we ended, well, actually, it was the second we were in like one cinema, you know, so, they, so their idea of a two week showing was like show us in a few cinemas the first week and then like reduce us to one in the next. So it's just been really tough. Distribution is not easy. There's so many films out there, so many to choose from. I mean you know when you go to the cinema here you get a choice of you know you can either watch Avengers 2 or Avengers 2 or Avengers 2 or it's five screens of 007. There's hardly any choice. So the Cineplex is the multiplex really go gravitate towards Hollywood movies and Thai horrors, Thai comedy films. There's hardly any independent films shown. If they are shown, they're like shown for one week or two weeks. So it's very tough. Outside of Thailand, we've been very unlucky. We haven't managed to sell one territory in the last 18 months. Uh, people just say that it's a tough sell because it's about death and it's about an executioner and. You know, they don't know who he is, and we're like, yeah, but he was in Only God Forgives with Ryan Gosling. And I said, yeah, but is Ryan Gosling in your film? No. Okay. So it's really tough. 
distribution is the hardest thing. You can't just go out and make a film and expect people to want to put it in the cinema. It, it requires money, connections, and it's kind of hard to get your, your, you know, your film even seen by HBO. And we were the HBO Asia Film of the Month, like a few months ago. And I did get in touch, and I said, listen, guys, we're the, like, the film of the month. Does that mean that you've like bought the film? Or I, I just want, because I, I, no one told me. And they're like, oh, no, no, we just add, like, if, you know, we just do that just to like promote Asian films every now and again. I was like, well, would you be interested in looking at it? And of course, you never hear back from them again, so it's hard. I think you need a sponsor, like Martin Scorsese, or, you know, someone to put you a New York Film Festival Sundance, you need someone, not really a film agent, but just a sponsor who, who wants to be involved in a, a really unusual film. I don't think the audience or the money is really in Thailand. I think, uh, from a Varad point of view, it's a very interesting film because it conveys a huge amount of information that you didn't already know. How many films do you go to that you didn't already know stuff? And it's portrays it in a very sensitive way. I mean, it's not Land of Smiles, but it's actually the real Thailand, you know? No, um, I, I don't think it's just about Thailand. It's it's, it's, it's so, 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 so. Well, Down. Talk, right talk, 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 talk to the eight I, inch, eight I, inch. I was just saying, I, I don't think this film is just about Thailand. It covers such a broad international spectrum of everything. Yeah. And I think at the end. The thing that got me at the end, and um, I'm still learning about Thai culture, but the thing that got me at the end was he chose family over talent, which I didn't think was going to happen. So that sort of blew me away. But, and, and that's why I think it's such a an international spectrum of film. I, I don't think you should even consider it as, as a Thai film, even though it's about Thai. The story is about a man and his family and his journey. And that covers everything. Yes, well, we, we showed the film to a lot of audiences and they, they have similar opinion as you do, that the film is quite, it's, it's quite accessible for other cultures. But, you know, even I remember when I went to Israel, I showed the film to an Israeli audience and, and you know, I said, I asked them, so do, you, so do you guys have death penalties? And they said, no, 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 we don't have death penalty, except for Nazis. So, so you do have death penalties. No, 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 we don't. But if, if they're like Nazi war criminals, yeah, we do. We kill them. So, you know, so each culture has a kind of different aspect on capital punishment, and that's one of the things that, you know, we didn't make the film about capital punishment, but it, obviously people talk about it, and Amnesty showed the film recently about to, to promote, well, not promote, as an anti-capital punishment film. I remember the first night at this screen at Emporium, we had like a group of ladies waiting in front of the theatre, and they all came from the Amnesty International Thailand, and all they want to see is that how bad we, we, we did it. And then it turned out that they loved the movie, and it became the movie that they used to show people. Like, you know, we, we were selected for, like, I think the anti capital punishment day and for film that show to, to promote yeah, anti human, human rights, yeah, human human rights festival. festival and stuff. So, at least, you know, the. It's not just a movie that people come and forget, see and uh, forget about it. You know, they still think about it, they talk about it. You know, last two weeks ago, it was up in Chiang Mai University, and it was showing to the law student at the Chiang Mai U, and it was a great response, you know, just like tonight. Yeah, the, the problem is there's no money in making films for human rights activists because they don't have any money. So, you know, what we what we were hoping we would do is get some distributor to take on the film and, and kind of give it a release in other countries, especially in the U.S., but we just haven't found the right distributor to do that yet. It's very tough. There's, a, as I said, a lot of films from all over the world competing for cinema space, and these days you have to pay the distributor to show your film. And they have to go and hire a cinema in New York. That's how they do it. Now. You you pay them instead of them paying you. Pay you. Well, that, it used to be that they pay you. Now yeah. you have to pay them. Mm -hmm. so. That's not a good deal. <laughs> yeah, you, you said that you didn't get a chance to meet him, but if you now, having made the movie, what would you ask him or like to know if you did to get the chance to meet him? <laughs> Well, I think it's it's kind of it was better that I didn't meet him because I think if I'd met him, I, I would have had a different. I wouldn't have been able to make the film 
that I wanted to make because I took his story and I turned it, we, you know, we turned it as, as a team, turned it into a film uh, that is, you know, that, that people can watch, uh, you know, all over the world. We didn't make it about necessarily like a, a documentary where you'd have, you know, because, you know, we have people say, from his family even, they were like, yeah, but you know, he didn't do that. And so, well, yeah, but this is a movie, you know, so in a movie, you can't, tell every single thing. They were like, why did you have more scenes with the monk? And I'm like, well, you know, it was like, we had to choose. I mean, you're, you're, you know, sorry, but you know, he lived a long life. We had to, we had 95 minutes to shoot, to, to show the story. And you can't get caught up on like, every little thing that he did. And actually, if you made a film, if it was really a film about just his life, it would be very boring. You wouldn't have any of the other characters that we introduced into the film. Uh, and in fact, it's funny because on the first night we showed the film, and the, the, the family were there, they were very excited about it, and they were very pleased with what we'd done. Because I was kind of nervous about what they, what they would think. And they were, they were very sort of thankful and grateful. And then about 18 months later, they, after the DVD came out, they got a couple of DVD. They, started, they watched the DVD, they obviously watched it a couple of times, and said, oh, you know, I think they missed out a lot, you know. They could, we could make it, I think we should do a mini-series. <laughs> and so they're like, yeah, we're thinking of like selling it to TV and uh, selling our story to TV and doing a mini-series. Because we don't think that, we don't think that Tom actually, you know, he, there are a lot of things that he missed about Sheva. It's like, well, <laughs> which is funny because, you know, at the time when we showed it the first time, they were so elated that, the, that we even made a film about this, that you know, husband, father, and uh, after a while, you know, people obviously, they think, well, you know, because obviously he's gone now, and maybe they also think, you know, oh, maybe we can get a little bit of money out of this. Because they don't understand that films don't make money. You know, because um, obviously if we'd made our million, we would have made a donation to the family, but we, we're obviously still trying to recoup the budget of the film. I mean, the film is at a loss, you know, so we lost a lot of money on the film, even making this story about it. Chavarret, so, um, but it, it's tough. When you make a, a film about a real person, uh, I think it's always safer to do it once they're gone, in a way, because if you try and do it when they're still alive, there's so many things that inhibit you from making the film you want to make. Oh, I just want to share a little thing. Uh, might not be exactly the answer that you want from what you were just asking. I remember that before we start shooting, uh, you know, uh, the pre-prep of the film, Tom gave me lots of videos and interviews of Chawa Ray, books, and uh, and then we we met the family quite often, and I, I I call his daughter like every like five times a day, just like I have a question about your dad. So for several weeks, and then the day of the shoot came and it was my first day uh, going on the set. So I called her, I said, hey, you know what, today is my first day shooting the movie about your dad. I just want you to pray to your dad and ask him for his support for me. And then before she hung up the phone, she said to me, I love you, daddy. <laughs> so that was, for me, I, you know, I said, this is beyond doing a movie, it just, it's my responsibility to, to represent him the way the family will, will feel, you know, that when they come out, so I just want to share. Do you think you did him justice? As a family happy? I think so. Yeah, I think, you know, they want to prove, the, um, not prove They want more, they want him to be in the miniseries. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I'm, yeah. Tom, Tom and uh, Kung Fu is Chris. Um, all I can say is just, how wonderful it is to have a group of people here who have appreciated what we've just seen. And uh, for me, it's a bit of a, a cycle because when Tom first approached us uh, and, and, and asked for a small segment to be filmed in Checking on Nina, you know, I, it, 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 it was skin in the game for us. What, what I'd like to ask about it is the extension of what Tom said. There, there is just a, such a chasm in in Bangkok for venues that can show art house. Yeah. It, you, you've either got Channel 3 soap operas or Cinemax 
you know, mass mass media movies. It, 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 is there an opportunity for, for just marvelous experiences like we've just had for the last two hours? I mean, is there, a, is there opportunities here for Art House? It, it, I, don't, I, do, I don't think there's any commercial opportunity because, you know, art house by their very nature, they have a very, sometimes can have only a niche audience. And, you know, we didn't make this film for a niche audience. We try to make it for mass, mass, mass audience. Mass but, but just distribution is the problem and getting venues that will show the film. So we had to strike, we opened in about 16 cinemas when it came out. And it was for just, less than a week, right? For a, well, for a week and then we're off, you know. But, I mean, the amount of screens showing, you know, there were three or four screens showing the same, like Transformers is on four screens. Planet of the Apes is on three screens. We're on one screen and there's maybe a Thai comedy and a, and a horror film. Well, that's it. screen is showing at 11 p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could go and see the film at like 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, and then at, in the other, at, like by 6 o'clock it wasn't on. <laughs> it was like, but again, you do. I, I, I tried to see it and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get to a show. I've had to wait till tonight. <laughs> but you're dealing with Thai culture, it was very different to ours. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, just saying you, you're dealing with Sorry. Thai culture. We've been going to the, uh, the MCC all year. And they've been having international films all year and inviting the directors. And there's a Thai film coming up in a couple of weeks and they're inviting the director. I mean, have you ever approached the FCC? Yeah, we, we offered it to them, but they didn't want to show it. They wanted to show it mass Thai comedy instead. So they're showing, <laughs> they're showing this, they're showing a film called um, Thank you, I love you, or something, right? Yeah. 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 We, yeah, we did. We did offer. I think it's also because the lady who programs that she was upset that we didn't take it to her film festival in India, but we chose another film festival instead. So I think that's why we're not showing the FCCT. But I did show my last film there, and we had quite a good response. But yeah, thank you for letting us know. Uh, it's it's always difficult to find venues that can kind of that want to do something with the film at the right time because you know we couldn't show this film even here or really before because we're we're still in commercial distribution now we're out of commercial distribution it's easier to do kind of screenings and to do venues and like we showed it in Chiang Mai recently as well so now we're trying to just uh, show it to, to, to groups that haven't had a chance to see it um, and we may do more of this but this has been a great experience Chris thank you very much for having us here tonight in the check-in 99 and it, and it really was a lifesaver to have a venue to shoot that little scene because <laughs> when you make a film with, with not very much money and you don't have a lot of um, options where, where to go, you know, the first thing they think when you go to a venue is they think, as a filmmaker, they think you've got more money than God. So they always expect, uh, you know, location fees and payments up big. You know, when I, I work as a producer for Hollywood films and everywhere I go in Thailand now, it's just you know, we spend a lot of money trying to just get a location because they just see dollar signs in their eyes. As soon as they see a film crew, they're like, it's their license to ask for money. And sometimes they have you over a barrel because you, you fall in love with, the director's fallen in love with the location, wants to use it so much, you've got no choice. You end up having to, you know, they kind of extort money from you. So, uh, and, and Thailand's become a very popular filming destination. There are a lot of people coming to shoot films here. Yeah, Boo's always working, he's always playing a general or a policeman or a uh, cult leader. Cult leader, yeah, <laughs> in movies. And, um, so, so, you know, uh, so my, my day job is really producing films for other people that come to shoot here in Thailand. And we get, you know, inquiries all the time. People always want to come and shoot here. It's such a great, uh, we have such great crews, great locations. Um, and there's a great film community here of uh, professionals working in the kind of foreign film industry. And, you know, you're always working like, how many films do you do a year? Like five, six films a year in a year? Something like that. So, I'll let you speak about it. <laughs> well, I always say that, you know, um, it's interesting because the Wade Moore, the VP of this film, he, he did fantastic job, it's beautiful cinema photography for me. Uh, he was the one who discovered me. I started acting at the age of 50. 
and for me to have a chance to, to play the lead role in several films is, you know, is beyond my dream. And um, it's, it's just that you know, every time I'm, I'm on a set of the movie that they produce, uh, they come to Thailand, I know that the money is being spent here and it's, it helps the, the country's economy. You know, we, like, you know, when Tom, when Tom produced the film, I mean, like, last movie was how, how many million dollars? Forty million dollars, yeah. Yeah, so it was, it was here what? in Thailand and it was... This movie? How much, <laughs> no, no, this <laughs> how much did this one cost? Have a guess. Can anyone guess? Uh, what time? I didn't hear it. How much did it cost? Yeah. Can anyone guess how much the movie cost? In, in okay, in American dollars or Thai dollars? Five dollars, whatever, yeah. Five hundred thousand. Yeah, million. Million. No, okay. you're, you're way too high. You're all way too high. Oh, I really? Uh, Hundred thousand, oh. maybe. You, you work cheaply. <laughs> well, no, you know, he, he okay. it was a passion project, so, you know, it's yeah. not a film where I've got a lot of money. So, the film costs, well, probably around, uh, after all, it costs maybe about a quarter of a million dollars, which is oh. about, you know, uh, six, seven, six, seven, million, six, seven million five. Yeah. You know, six to make the film, another million to promote it. So, uh, and we did get that back from the box office. We got about one and a half million from the box office. So we're down five and a half million. Five. <laughs> See, I cry every time I watch the movie because I feel so emotional attached. Yeah. I cry because you cry. 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 <laughs> <laughs> But where do you find the wonderful role? Except in that time. Actually, Boo was in a film. He was in a film called Only God Forgives with, with an actor called Ryan Gosling, who's a big star in Hollywood. Actually, I did went to Cannes. That movie was selected to... Oh, they wore the red carpet with Christmas Scott Thomas. Yeah. What's it called? Only God Forgives. Yeah. Only God Forgives. Yeah. Correct. So, I did... Tom didn't take me to Cannes that year, so I decided to... You go on your own. You go on your own. <laughs> <laughs> it was so a wonderful experience. How was this received in the Thai press? The Thai press uh, was pretty good, actually, considering the Thai press are pretty harsh on films, usually, especially on films by, you know, Le Krum or May Lai Persaid, you know, Thai people who are not really Thai. So they kind of always have this kind of rather jaundiced view of, like, my films, anyway. And I always get, I get a bit of a hard time, because I've been here for 12 years now. So I moved back to Bangkok in 2002. And this is my second Thai language film. And the first film was about corruption in the monastery and corrupt police and, and monks uh, who having sex and getting murdered and that kind of thing. So they're, 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 they kind of were expecting, I suppose, they, they knew that I was going to be making something different. But they pigeonholed us as an art house film rather too quickly. So. It doesn't help when you have a review saying, oh yeah, this film is only for the art house crowd, you know. Because then, because it's not really for the art house crowd, it's for everyone. But it's when you get pigeonholed like that, it doesn't help when you're trying to talk about getting more screens in multiplexes. So, um, well, this year, uh, there are two big awards in Thailand. One is called the Golden Swan, which is Supernova, which is a, a national award. And then there's another, very old award, and they call it Dukata Tong, which is one was given by the, the king. And uh, the organization that gave out this award is actually the Association of uh, the Journals of uh, Entertainment Press. So, like, you know, we received the best movie. Yeah, we, we won the best, best picture Dukata Tong Award, and which, is, which is great because the, the industry award, we didn't get any nominations because <laughs> we're not a comedy or a horror or we don't. You know, we're sleeping with the wrong people, I guess. So, I, we didn't get not even one, not even one nomination for that. And whereas we got five, six nominations for the other award, and we won two. We won best screenplay and best picture. So it just goes to show that they here in Thailand, it's like it's who you know, not kind of. It doesn't. It's not always the merits of the film. And actually, funnily enough, this year they asked me to be a judge on the, I'm on the jury of the Sapanahong Awards, the, other, the ones that didn't nominate us, because they said, oh God, he went and won the other one, we better have him as a judge on our one now. So, so I've got to sit through 35 Thai movies 
last year was a judge. Yeah, 69. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's. A, I, I've only got 35 so far, but I'm I'm struggling. So. <laughs> but it's it's to be honest, to to even make a second movie in Thai, the first one didn't make any money either. So to to do another one was kind of another risk. You know, I risk kind of professionally whether I would be accepted as a Thai filmmaker, and uh, and of course they they tried to make sure that we didn't win any Sapana Halls because. Actually, we were nominated for, our last film was nominated for five awards and we won the Best Supporting Actor and we, we were nominated for Best Film, Best Director, Best Screenplay, Best Actor and I think they're worried that we're going to win all those awards this time so they didn't let us get any nominations. <laughs> so they probably said, oh he's got another passport, he can't, he's not really tied. <laughs> so, um, so it is tough to try and get recognition within the industry, even with your own peers, and uh, it's hard to try and to to try and play both sides of the coin because I do foreign movies here, and I'm also making Thai films, so I'm a bit of a hybrid, and they don't know how to they don't know what pigeonhole to put you in for that. So, Tom, let me ask you, what did Uncle Blue mean? What did what did that make it for the box office? Do you remember? Uncle Boomy was was very successful overseas. They sold it to a lot. Of, it was sold in a lot of countries because it's super super art house niche. Uh, you know, it, it went to the Cannes Film Festival and won the you know best the, the what's it called the Cannes um, yeah. the Palm Door. Yeah. yeah. So it was, but it's I mean it's 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 quite an inaccessible film if you ask me compared to. The films I make are, are trying to be more, yeah, more accessible to regular audiences. Are you by any chance related to Jerry Waller? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much for coming to see the film. And, and we, if you're interested, we can do this again. We have another film called Mindfulness and Murder, the, movie, the one we did before. So maybe Chris will program that one night sometime. Can I can I have a show of hands? Is this night tonight like interesting if we yeah. put on yeah. further shows? Yeah. Please please um, you know I did my best to try and publicize it, but if you've got friends or um, you know people that would you think would be interesting, I would be delighted to support this type of venue for one wonderful Creative contributions at time. It's a great environment for film. Yeah. You can and have wine. You can then go. <laughs> my my dear friend Sue and I, <laughs> Sue and I are the same vintage. In, uh, in Australia and Melbourne, we had the Valhalla Cinema, right? Yeah. Okay. And the Valhalla Cinema was a rundown old venue that put on art house movies. And they used to have a fabulous A3 poster with all the, all the movies that, that people just never get a chance to see. And and it's much better to have a glass of wine and, and friends and a nice atmosphere than buy the bloody pirate copy on the corner of Soy Five. You know, we'd be delighted, Tom and Kunpu, to to whatever it can to make the world go round to provide this venue to you if you if you you can. Encourage just, this, just type of, this type of venue, and, and 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 the cost tonight actually goes to the license fees tonight. That Tom uh, very very kindly has given some relief to. Yeah, I, mean, I just wanted. To, did anyone see Mindfulness and Murder, the film, the last film we did? Oh, you saw. Yeah. Um, I think it's a. It's also a very interesting film because it, it's quite. Uh, it was the first Thai film I made and. I made it with kind of no inhibitions. I just basically it was a film that starts off with like a scene of cops, kind of basically, um, yeah, corrupt cops. It starts off with a scene of corrupt cops, and the next scene is like a murdered boy in a monastery, and we go from there. And he plays a an ex cop who's who's turned monk for ten years, and he's asked to investigate because the Thai police are too lazy to. And the abbot says, oh, you better investigate. You used to be a cop, didn't you? And then, Put it on the line, Tom. Yeah. 
Before Christmas, who who would like to come on a Sunday night? See? Well, maybe maybe yeah, maybe even in Jan. I don't know. Maybe it's too soon to have it now. But up to you. But whatever you've got a slot. Slot three or four January. Sundays. Yeah, January. January. Okay, let's let's put it in for a Sunday night. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please put your hand together for the most marvelous two creators tonight? Thank you very much. See you in January. Okay, see you in January, Tom.